Joe Biden has officially entered the 2020 presidential race, but instead of a town hall, he's planning to hold Uncle Joe's Deaf Poetry Slam. Yay. <laughs> Chase Bank is being criticized for posting a snarky tweet criticizing customer spending habits. Chase immediately deleted the tweet and then charged customers a $6 oversnark fee. <laughs> President Trump wants immigrants to pay a fee to file an application for asylum. When asked how immigrants are supposed to afford the fee, Trump suggested they just pawn red carpet gowns they've already worn. Mm -hmm. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle are expecting their first baby any day now. Meg, in traditional royal fashion, Meghan will be chauffeured to a butterfly sanctuary where she will be read Voltaire while the butler holds her teacup. And finally, as prisoners at Guantanamo Bay age, the Pentagon is considering how to make nursing home type adjustments. It shouldn't be difficult because bingo is already a form of torture. The Trump Report starts now. You're tuned in to AfterBuzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz begin. <laughs> Ah, uh, yes, indeed. Welcome to Trump versus Biden. Wait, I think I might have gotten a little ahead of myself there. Welcome to the Trump Report. Oh, I'm Christian no. Lott. <laughs> what? Did I, sorry, is this the no spoilers edition of the presidential? I didn't know I was race? signing up for that already. Well, I mean, it's gonna be it's gonna be Trump versus somebody, unless you believe Scott, then it'll be Pence versus somebody. Uh, Chelsea, say uh, hello to the people. Hello, people. That's Chelsea Galicia, and Tamara Brown. Yeah, that's me. Downtown, Tamara Here we Brown. Are. How how is everybody out there? Let us know. Let us know in the chat or just yell out your window. We'll hear it. <laughs> Uh, big Joe Biden entering the presidential race. I think that was a, uh, it was a, it, I don't even know that it was a secret that he was trying to keep, but, you know, it wasn't official. And, um, you know, there was some awkward apology videos. So there's that. Uh, what do you think about his viability as a candidate based solely on these current allegations? We will go beyond that in a moment. But the, uh, the you know, I, he made me feel uncomfortable, uh, all of that, that, you know, I think it's been fairly well documented over the last month or so. Uh, and videos of him, you know, leaning in for awkward whispers and things. Some people complain about them. Some people are like, no, nah, that's just Joe being Joe. But uh, Tamara, do you think that this is an actual issue that's going is going to be an issue because of how often he'll get asked about it? Uh, do you think it'll be able to go away at some point? I think or should it? Should it even go away? I think he's fine. It doesn't bother me. These allegations don't bother me. I am the first person, you know, like in any sort of situation, I believe women always, but this isn't even that. It's he smells people's hair and has been yeah, who doesn't in do that? their face <laughs> and that is inappropriate and it's been brought to attention and I... I okay. think it's time to move forward. So if going forward he keeps smelling hair and, and you know, like if the, if there's new stuff that think, happens, is that going to be an, going to. No, no, sure. That, well, you don't think he is, but let's just say it happens. Like if, if it happens tomorrow, there's video of him just like the big, oh, is that Pert Plus? You know, something like that. The, that could be an issue, right? So you're asking me if he is the Democratic nominee and if, uh, well, if not he even smells there somebody's yet. hair... Will I vote for Trump for for his second term because he's because Joe Biden has uh, stepped in to smell somebody's hair? No that, question, that, I will not. No, no, I, I'm saying like you know how do, how does he do in the primaries if if he uh, if he can't keep it? It's not even his hands to himself. If he can't keep his think, nose to himself. I don't think his hands and nose are going to be an issue for him. I really don't. Hmm. Well, I, I remember President Trump bringing up uh, that you know he had small hands and that was a big issue. So hands do come up in debates. Chelsea is. Is this an actual concern, or is I, it? I am totally on Team Tamara here, and I. So don't... you're going to vote for Tamara? Yay! <laughs> Great. Yeah, I'm, I'm, in, officially I'm, announcing... in that, I'm in for that too. So. <laughs> I I don't see this as a problem. I don't see this anywhere in the realm of Me Too. This is, if there, it's just not for me. Um, I don't think not for you either. I'm glad that we're we're together on this one because I think that there are. Um, a good number of women who are like, there is one thing to be sexually harassed and um, made to feel like you need to sleep with somebody in order to have a career and to be, you know, threatened to mean um, sexually and have somebody put their hands on your shoulders or lean into you 
a little close. I don't think that that um, goes into um, the realm of, of, of illegal harassment at all. It's one of those you know, fine lines where you have to be able to tell people, oh, that's a little close, why don't we step back a bit? And as he said, he'll take more responsibility for it knowing his, his position. I don't think that that is what will take him out. I am hoping what will take him out is just that he's a meh uh, candidate. A man. You, I was going to say, you left the mm <laughs> off the no, end no. of that. Yeah. It's not Tamar that he's a man, it's just that he's meh. So, yeah. yeah, it's that he's a meh. Uh -huh. Exactly. Uh, well, I think that, I think it's something that he'll continue to be asked about, and I think as long as he, as long as the answer never becomes, oh, are you still asking me about that? You know, and not that he would use those words, but that, you know, sort of that uh, tone if you cut through it. But uh, I, I mean, I think that, uh, you know, he he enters the race as a front runner. But then when you look, it's like, oh, yeah, like 14 percent, you know, because it's like uh, the numbers that I saw, 43 percent. It wasn't not sure. 43 percent don't care. You know, of uh, I think it don't was registered. Care. They just don't care. Like, I because I think it's thirty-five. Too, uh, yeah, that's what I heard well, today. Well, I, I heard that they didn't care. Today, I heard today, as far as Democratic voters polled, he's in the lead. Bernie's second among Democratic but it, at voters. At like nine percent. Yeah. So it, it's like, but it's it's a very. I think it, it was they're, like they're, thirty something. See, percent. the the one that I saw. That's all I can refer to. Is it's a very it's a very narrow sl slice of pie. It's like you know down to Beto with like three percent or something. You know, and Mayor Pete had like four or five. So it was like everybody had like tiny little percentages, and the majority of people, uh, I, you know, I was kind of turning into the skid for comedic purposes. But for the most part, people are just like, you know, they're just not sure. Because, well, well, again, I, what, do, what do we know about policies for some of them? And, and for a lot of them, it's not really that much. I, I, I think even I'm, you know, pretty politically passionate, right? Or else I wouldn't be here. And I'm even a little, um, I don't know what, what the right word is, but a little bit just backseat, withdrawn, just taking a look, just listening just observing and seeing how it shapes up, but I am not going hard for for any single candidate right, right now, including Bernie Sanders, who, you know, a couple of years ago, you might be shocked to say that a few years later, I'm still, even on him, going to sit back and look at all the options because he may have been the perfect choice in 2016. He may not be the perfect choice in 2020. The time, same for Biden. He may have been a good choice one of those other times that he ran, but not in this context so we we shall see uh so would do you feel it's like you're kind of walking around the 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 car dealership after hours just looking at the cars because you don't want the uh, salesman like what can i get you you know you don't want one of them coming right up to yeah. you and shaking hands and that's being a like, good analogy can you text me forty dollars yeah i just want to i just want to hear i want and it, it's not just about what their policies are right but a lot of how i assess whether i you know, I'm passionate about a candidate is how they respond to things that happened, things that respond that happened in in the, you know, whether it, how they respond to a mass shooting, how they respond to, you know, whatever life over the next nine months until voting starts in Iowa. How are they going to respond? How do they react? What does their leadership look like when they need to to react? Because we can, everybody can have the most grandiose idea of po policies, but it's how, how do, what does somebody say? How does somebody appear as a leader in the times when life happens? Because as much as their policies are interesting and important for what they plan or want to do, the truth is, is that life happens over the course of those four or eight years in office. And most of it is a reaction to what happens in the world or in the country and less about their agenda. Uh, Tamara, keeping in mind how important it is to deal with things that are in the news currently, do you feel like it's important to have a candidate that can respectfully talk about Game of Thrones without giving away spoilers? Is that is that like kind of did anybody one? give them a did somebody give away a spoiler? No, none of the candidates. I, I just understand that that's a big deal. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm not a big dragon oh, fan, if but they I know what's good for them. For heaven's <laughs> sake, I would. That's that. That's something that would certainly. <laughs> Touch anybody you want, Joe Biden, but don't give away a, a spoiler to end game. Spoiler right. See, exactly. Spoiler. You got to have that around. Yeah. Um, I, I also I'm, I I would like to think that most Democrats are going to be like me and will vote 
for whoever the Democratic nominee is that will, I think we all need to throw our weight behind the Democrat. Well, who, yeah, who, whoever that. the nominee um, is, sure, but I, but sort I, of before that stage. Before that stage, I've said I've said for the past five or six shows that I have. I'm nobody is standing any ahead in my until the debates start until. I, and probably until around June will I imagine that I'm going to start to be in favor and, of one I, person and over I, another. I mean this legitimately. Do you mean this June or like next June as like the primaries well, go along? or? I think this June. This okay. June, once we start to see them talk to each other and see Kamala against Elizabeth, uh, against uh, Cory Booker, I feel like has been... I, I haven't really heard a peep from him. Yeah, about well, there is that rumor going around about the, him. The, yeah. And he's been laying low ever since. he's necrophiliac? Yeah, it's been, going, it's been out Gosh, there for like you three weeks. Guys, I Look, cannot. it's been out there. This is not funny. <laughs> Look, you weren't there. No. You don't know. Uh, but legitimately, <laughs> the reason why I wanted to get to this is that this wasn't an op-ed, but it was an article in the New York Times that asked this question. And... I'm going to answer it as, as a white man would, and then I will uh, ask what you think. But the question asks, should a white man be the face of the Democratic Party in 2020? And I have two quick answers to that. One, yes, if you think that that's who gives you the best chance to win. And two, this is the crazy part. If that's who people vote for in the primaries, then yes, absolutely. Now, as Bernie found out, it doesn't matter if more people vote for you in the primaries, if the superdelegates are rigged, and you know they're going to have the nominee they want. So is it more important to have a Democrat who is going to win or gives you the best chance to win? Or I think we need to, you know, have someone who's more representative of the party. Maybe they they are. Let's just say that Biden or Bernie is the best candidate going into, say, January, you know, when the primaries are going to start. Uh, should the party be like, nope, we're all in on either Cory Booker, Kamala Harris, Elizabeth Warren, you know, somebody that is you know, not a white man. Uh, do you think that that's what the priority should be, Tamara? No. The, I, the winning I, is I, what I, I'm I, asking. I think putting, putting a priority on not electing a white man is just as bad as putting the priority on electing a white man. You know, I think I think if, if you're going to... I think the, the, the best candidate is going to be the best candidate. I don't think the Democratic Party should... If we truly are, um, you know, above any sort of discrimination, then I think it should go, it, we, we should be looking at policy over identity politics. What do you think? I am on the same page as Tamara, and but I would have to take it to like one degree further is that it's not just the best candidate, but we, I believe, need a candidate that many Democrats and even independents can be very excited about. I don't think it's just a matter of like, is this person most electable against Trump? Is Does this person light people up? That's what we're going to need in order to meet and beat the intense passion from the other side, which is why somebody like Biden um, Mm, what's the right word for it, is not doing it for me. Because yes, I see he's the front runner and he you know, appeals to a wide base, but I don't think that if he is the nominee that he will create a, a fire and a passion and intensity on the Democratic side. I just don't. And it's not because he is a white male. I think that there would be that excitement if it was somebody bold, say like Bernie Sanders or Pete Buttigieg. And just because they have, um, I don't want to call it more like charm. I don't know, especially because no. Bernie's not charming. But but I, I think that the excitement around them, the excitement around what they stand for, and it's not just a return to when we were kind of working. This is bold, new, you know, going into the future, you know, with gusto and not just about beating Trump. Right. I mean, I think that you certainly saw that with uh, Bernie in 2016. And then, you know, about, sure, Buttigieg and, uh, you know, Beto during his Senate race. I mean, he, yes, he did not win, but everyone as far as I can tell, was surprised at how close that got. And he did sort of have that kind of support. Um, I, I don't know that he's necessarily the best candidate, but it, it's the kind of, it's not even intensity. It's, you know, when you create, 
it starts with grassroots, but when people are just like, yeah, I'm just all in on this guy, like how in 2008 was supposed to be Hillary's year to run for president. But then obviously, uh, you know, you, you know, I mean, it, it was, believe it or not, it was down to uh, Hillary, Obama, and uh, John Edwards. And all of a sudden, everybody's like, yeah, but like Obama's way more interesting and exciting mm -hmm. than all those. And yes, of course, you know, being African-American, you definitely get more attention. But I, I mean, you know, he's not the first African-American to ever run for president, you know, and I, there was something about him, I think, that people really connected with. It's just they would hear him talk and go, yeah, that guy, what he's saying. And I don't know that anybody's doing that right now. There's plenty of time for someone to do that. There's plenty of time for somebody Yes, there's like 20 people running for president. There's plenty of time for somebody that isn't in the race right now. And I'm not talking to you, Hillary. You, you don't you don't need to do this, okay? You're okay. Christian, calm down. <laughs> she's not getting in the race. Oh, she's uh, she's Jeff, not even trying. Isolate this clip so we can play it back next year. <laughs> uh, but uh, time coding it, guys. <laughs> thank you. Uh, no, I look. I, but it, you know, uh, it's. I, th I do feel like this is probably what you're going to get, you know, in terms of who's actually running. I think a lot less of them come the next few months. But uh, I, I don't know. I mean, you see people definitely get, you know, all sorts of support. But I know Beto spoke in Los Angeles. Uh, my, uh, my wife's cousin went and it was an event that they moved inside because there weren't as many people as they thought there mm. would. So they kind of sat yeah. in like a lounge, you know, and I'm, you know, I'm sure I could say that about other candidates. Just that's the one that I know. Mm -hmm. So I know that specifically that happened. And, you know, this isn't a rural area. This, this isn't like, you know, Bill de Blasio going to Iowa and like two people sitting down to hear what he has to say. This, a lot of people could have made it to that event. So uh, I, I don't know who. This is LA. What time was it? And yeah. that, that makes a total difference. About <laughs> well, did you have to could... RSVP? Did you have to? Right. Was and, there a red carpet? Well, there there was not a red carpet, but I, I think they were doing headshots there outside. So yeah. I feel like there should have been a yeah. lot of people there. Well, also, there's the what Chelsea pointed out last week is that does it even matter? Because Russia is going to interfere in this election as well. Now, I do think mm -hmm. Russia can certainly interfere, but I think that if you're not dealing at the same kind of margins as you had last year, like, who's to say that Russia hasn't been interfering for 15, 20 years? You know, it's just that the elections um, were further um, apart. Oh, I, man, that is, did you get that from Trump? No, I got that from like me. Something, something because, that he would say. Because, wait, I'm saying, do you know that they haven't been? But I'm, that, that, but look, that that election was. I'm hoping so that would close. have been in the Mueller report. They would have said actually these efforts began no, well the, before the 2016 election. That this was based on infrastructure that they had right. built. Right. I, I think years that ago. the Mueller report was basically about like, yeah, here's a bunch of things that the rest of you can do. I, I'm out. I, I don't want to do this anymore. You know, I'm tired of being Bob Mueller. Um, bye. Yeah. <laughs> right. Exactly. But, but yeah, it's weird that I, the Mueller report ended, ended with, with bye, bye. bye, Felicia. I was just like, well, that's weird. Anyway, My sense say? from you is that you don't believe that the interference made that much of a difference. But no, I, I don't. So I think that not enough people voted for Hillary Clinton in states that because, had the right number of electoral votes. Part of that, she didn't go to Wisconsin, places like that. You that know? is true. Yeah. And at the same time, some of this interference was aimed at social media, at particular yes. people in these states to not only turn up the volume on support for Trump, but also to turn it down on, on Hillary. Yes, but if you have... This, to get to the bigger picture, if you have an exciting, engaging candidate, you're not going to turn down the volume on Bernie or, you know, like an Obama, because very few people were excited about Hillary. You know, they were just like, she, she got the nomination. She, she got notice what I mean. But it wasn't it wasn't people didn't talk about it the same way they took, talked about Bernie. I mean, you know, in theory, Without superdelegates, Bernie could have become the nominee. And this is what I think is the Biden problem, that he feels to me like, it's, Hillary, I'll vote for him if that's my option, right. but I'm not fired up. I. What if Gary Johnson gets back in, you think? <laughs> you think uh, you know, the, the, it worked so well the last time? Let's get another... Or, well, no, Ralph Nader's dead, isn't he? All right, so that's not going to work. But, uh, you know, the... Uh, no, is Ross Perot still alive? No, three, third party, please don't. Don't, mm -hmm. don't, don't, don't. Uh, but, I mean, yeah, look, I think that the, the, the interference is easier when it's somebody that just people aren't that passionate about. 
you know i'll give you that that is true yeah. but also the the interference w was in outright lies outright lies helping trump and outright lies like saying a candidate Hillary. is a necrophiliac that's probably a lie right i didn't say any names I, I I can't not I cannot believe you I can <laughs> I think Tamara started it I did start that one terrible it's no yeah. it didn't Actually, catch on like wildfire like still I thought time he, he did say that he if he were the the nominee he would uh, opt for a female vice president which is an interesting point uh, that I mean you put that out there uh, and I don't mean you I mean he puts that out mm -hmm. there which Biden? is uh, no Biden had put it out there Booker Booker, Booker okay. yeah. Uh, I just almost made a joke for really old people like me. Uh, but uh, yeah, so uh, Booker did put that out there. And I was just like, OK, I, I, that seems like a kind of a stab in the dark. Like I remember during the Republican primaries, Ted Cruz let us know that uh, Carly Fiorina was going to be his vice president. But he wasn't you know, that was just because he was just trying. They was trying anything. I mean, look, his dad killed, tried to kill Fidel Castro. Oh, so geez. obviously, <laughs> allegedly, do you feel better now? Uh -huh. uh, but. Look, he's friends with the guy who said that, so obviously it doesn't bother him. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But, you know, and that seems like, it seems like a pretty early point in the process for a Hail Mary pass. Like, I, I don't know. So as, let me ask, as women, do you hear that from Cory Booker and go like, okay, I would give him a stronger look if he, and, you know, let's say he, it would be like Kamala Harris or someone else who, you know, gets out of the race that you are familiar with, you know, not just like, oh, that, uh, Tamara's shaking her head very loudly so that our listeners on, on Spotify and iTunes probably can hear it. Uh -huh. But what are your thoughts on Cory Booker saying like, oh, and by the way, my VP is going to be a woman. It's the same thing as I said earlier about I, I don't think that we are... I'm not a, I'm not just looking to, to vote for a woman. I want to vote for the candidate that is inspiring. And by saying... I'm going to have a VP that's a woman. To me, that's the same as I'm going to... I'm going to have a vice president who is left-handed. I don't care. I Get the vice president that's best for the job. Right. And and also, I mean, it's hardly the point to be trying to figure that I don't know. So you hear... And, you know, Cory Booker's the one that did it. But any candidate, does that affect... Does that make you think less of them that they're doing that at this point in the process, that, that he's putting that out there? Bit. No, I mean, it's not... It doesn't really do all that much because I feel like I would have seen that coming from him. And, it, you know, oh, okay, that's it, that's cool. But it's just not going to move the needle, I don't think. Um, I think things that move the needle might be more like what Elizabeth Warren is doing, which is coming out with bold proposals, you know, eliminating student debt and... Um, Gosh, what that, oh my God. Well, that's, it, I mean, that's the, is going, th that is the one. big one that she's been at, out of the forefront of. And I, I think that's smart when you pick an issue that a lot of people can relate to. Um, I've already paid off my college debt, so I would like to know what's in it for me. You well, know? you know, here's the thing. I I was one of the, am one of the lucky few who did Lori Lachlan got you into college, yes. <laughs> I know all about it. I've read about no, it. Do I look like her? Like I could be her daughter and she paid to USC. By the way, I could have gone to you USC could be an influencer. because I, I had a parent that went to USC, but I was like nice to my parents and I was like, I'll go to a public school. Because I, look at you. Yeah, isn't that nice? Because no, my I, wife went to USC. She was mm, like, I'll take, yeah, that's, yeah. that's where we're going to go. But Aunt Becky got her into anyway, yeah, was but, your point. But I, I, I do believe that it is good for the economy. People that have money that they don't have to pay towards student loans can buy stuff from us, can hire us for stuff. Possibly you know? buy real estate, you know, I mean, or at least, you know, save up for it. Yeah, no, I mean, it's... So it's good for us all. And a lot of people, you know, especially like the better school you, you go to, and by better, I mean in terms of experience, like you go to an Ivy League school, I, I honestly don't know. Is that like 50 grand a year? Like, I assume it is. So oh, you're... Got to be more than that. All right. Well, so maybe not an Ivy League. Maybe, my school, maybe like Hofstra. At this point, my school is 60000 a year, I believe. Okay. See, that's that's why I did. I went to a college that, you know, granted, I graduated 20 years ago. But it was like my freshman year, it was like $16,000 a year. So I don't, I don't have a good grasp on what it actually costs. I just... Thought, so let's say you're you're in for like 200 grand worth of debt and even if you are on a track for a great job uh you're still that's that's still a lot to get out from under and here's the unfortunate thing is that like i had a lot of i graduated law school in 2008 right 
great great year to graduate mm -hmm. um, when a lot of people um, couldn't get jobs in their desired fields and then most of, a lot of people I would see them at the work comp board I am one of the few people who went into law school knowing that she was gonna be a work comp attorney because it's it's a, a family thing and then I ended up disliking it but I would shockingly see all these people I went to law school with show up at the work comp board. They're they're you know being work comp and attorneys, and then they got stuck there. Is that is, is just for clarification? Is that workman's compensation, like getting hurt on the job? Yes. I just wanted to make sure that that's mm -hmm. it wasn't. We went from workman's yeah. to workers' compensation a little bit oh, a while ago. I get it. But yeah, but no, look, yes. I still live in the '90s. It's my fault. <laughs> but yes, exactly. Yeah. But so then they got these jobs, and they're kind of stuck there. I see them around now and they're kind of like, yeah, I got I, like they don't have any options. So even if you are able to find a decent job that pays you six figures, many of these people are miserable. And is that really what we want? People who are stuck in a career because they have no choice to leave. I mean, I am so, so lucky and thank my lucky stars that I had the option to leave because I didn't have these loans hanging over my head. It's the only reason I think why I have the, the choice to, to, hey, be here right now and to be writing a book and to take on things that I'd never imagined before. And I think that that would be great for an entire country. Uh, but Tamara, do you think that when you're making a major issue out of you know forgiving college debt specifically, a uh, lot of people who vote don't go to college because they don't want to, they go to work right out of school, you know, all, all that. I mean, do you feel like it's better to have an issue that maybe doesn't immediately disqualify, I, I don't want to guess at percentages, but that's a considerable percentage, the people who don't go to college. Uh, do you think that, uh, do you think it could turn someone off like, oh, so you're looking out for all those college types, but uh, what about me? What about Joe or Jane Lunchbox here? <laughs> I included Jane. Um, I th what? So then, <laughs> what issue is Joe and Jane lunchbox? What are they concerned about? Probably, probably you know, building, the, probably building the, the wall. The coal industry. Oh. Pretty sure building the wall. Now that's not very nice. I'm just asking. I would hope. Well, the, oh, assuming that we're, they're not like this is like the new one issue voter, right? Um, I think there but are Elizabeth a lot of Warren those. speaks a lot to wanting to clean up the corruption everywhere. When you know Wells Fargo was found out to be. Um, you know, firing employees that had uh, open fraudulent accounts because the higher ups were pressuring them to do things like that. Um, she went to bat against the the execs, got the CEO taken out essentially, and then the next one that went in not too long ago, she I think helped oust him. So I think that Elizabeth Warren has done a good job over the last I don't know how many years now to show that she is a champion of the people, not just a champion of the student loan. Right. No, I know. I'm just, I just, she as we were talking. She wants to do away with the electoral college, right? Wasn't that one of the things she said recently? That seems a little self-serving for Democrats. I'd, I'd be interested in the Republican that says they want to do away with the electoral college. Because let's be honest, I mean, in this century, Democrats have gotten burned by the electoral college twice. So they kind of sound like sore winners of the electoral, I'm sorry, winner, sore winners of the popular vote. It sounded right in my head and mm -hmm, then it came out wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure if that is the uh, the a part of her brand that even e I know so if it, yeah. she could be but it's not something that she's really come out for but my point here is is that she's putting forth like bold policies like today I saw an interesting one from Amy Klobuchar that she planned to put together a criminal justice um, advisory board that would go through and allow mass um, oh my gosh Oh, help me out here when the sorry I was in the chat I definitely no when um, I was gonna say get out of jail free but you're thinking of monopoly <laughs> yes <laughs> park place and boardwalk are no. far too expensive I agree that sh that she is going to allow many people the opportunity to to a, a chance to get out of prison early by granting clemency because she's gonna have this board that doesn't need to be approved by Congress to help her in advising which um, uh, prisoners should be let out early on a mass scale. So that is an interesting, bold idea. Am I the only one that heard about it? No. No, I heard her, t she talked about that in the town hall in her town hall uh, last week on CNN, she's got a lot of really great ideas, and I, I hate to say this, I mentioned this last week, but I feel like Klobacher's 
biggest hurdle is that you can't she, say her name right she's not how do you say it well it's Klobuchar. It, it, Klobuchar? it's okay. it, it's easier than um, Buttigieg you know um, so she has that now so she just doesn't have the celebrity personality that is going to be needed to to win this and I don't know if any of the candidates actually do at this point really stand out with 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 the with the the celebrity personality that uh, Roger Stone used to bank on um, for for everybody that that he's always helped. But anyway. Roger Stone, by the way, who I believe is uh, speaking in a uh, strip club this weekend uh, to for raise him. money for a... legal defense. No, it's not. It's... I know it sounds like a joke, but oh that's God. actually true. Yeah. Uh, the, definitely the way I said it, you would yeah. think like, of I, course I, that's a joke, but let's uh, go, it's not. I, when uh, during the um, during the Kavanaugh hearing, um, I I loved uh, Klobuchar. I loved Kamala. Um, uh, Booker was there. Did Booker he stand was there? Up? No, he no. he he was a little. Um, I felt like he wasn't making clear points. He he did a little running around in circles. I don't remember what main I, at the at the it, time. It, it, like, you know, for me, what I remember just to interject about uh, Booker during that, I'm like. Oh, okay, so he's basically like got his campaign website open and he's reading from it and trying to tie it into this hearing. Mm-hmm. It, it felt felt a little bit. I mean, look, it's it's opportunistic for everybody running for president, but it, it for me it felt a lot from Cory Booker that that's what he was doing with that moment. It's like you got to hide it better than that. My but my point isn't bringing up the Kavanaugh hearing is that when I when I watched that I was inspired by by Kamala and Amy and I just think that. Um, uh, and Diane Feinstein, but she's not. Doesn't matter. She's not running for anything. Um, but uh, my point is, once I see them on TV and these debates start, I feel like that's when I'm going to throw my weight behind a certain candidate. Right, and I think that's what's going to help a lot of people. Because I mean, look, if you just if you look at everybody running, you you know, like, okay, the people with the most name recognition. Biden, Bernie, Elizabeth Warren. You can say others too, but I mean, those are people that have been in the news in recent years anyway, so you know who they are, so they have that advantage. Now, once the debates start, and yes, it comes down to who do you get a good meme from, who has like the good sound bite, you know, who all that. And it's like, yeah, because especially when there's going to be 14 candidates in a debate or whatever, mm-hmm. uh, it's going to be about oh, who has that one moment that is probably only under 30 seconds who shines in that moment and then that's who you look for the the next debate i'm my money is for for that if that's the criteria is pete Buttigieg. i think he i think you're absolutely right um because you mentioned uh prisoners i did want to circle back to that is something that has come up that uh bernie has uh said that he feels like you know released prisoners or i don't know if while they're still in prison whatever the the plan is uh should should be able to vote Mm -hmm. and of course uh as any uh any astute questioner would ask and i think this actually is how it came from the audience they specifically asked like well what about the boston bomber and uh i think the right answer to that is like well i guess we'd have to look at everything but i don't i don't think that that was the answer that they got the answer was oh yeah well everybody obviously we have to let everybody vote and i i think that's when you sort of get the the reverse meme because now you're the guy who wants the boston bomber to vote it doesn't even matter about what your issue is because mm-hmm. the idea of letting prisoners vote isn't necessarily a bad one it's like you know well, you know, what are the requirements? What kind of crimes? How long? You know, I, I don't know what the answer is to any of that. I mean, to me, off the top of my head, what sounds fair is that if you took away somebody else's right to vote, i.e. you killed them, mm-hmm. then you don't get to vote. Right. I mean, I'm on the same page as you. I think it's like, well, if you wanted to be able to vote, and yes, people get wrongly imprisoned all the time. But in general, it's like, well, that's another reason to think about not committing your crime. You know, it's like if voting is so important to you, maybe you don't hire someone to murder your spouse. I mean, because you read those stories all the time. Mm-hmm. Those are out there. Mm-hmm. That's somebody that I don't think should get a right to vote. Also, I don't know that they would get prisons, released. The prisons are bursting at the seams with people who have hired someone if, to kill their spouse. If you get your news from the Daily Mail like I do, <laughs> there are a lot of those stories. So, uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, Most it, of them, federal prison, violence. are nonviolent drug offenders. Sure, and I, I don't see any reason why someone like that shouldn't be able to, to vote. But at the same time, if you're going to say, no, because we don't want to open the door a crack for them because we don't want murderers to be able to vote. I'm like, yeah, I get that. I, I don't know. Yeah. It's not. A, it's not an important issue for me. Um, 
I, I don't know. Am, am I missing a segment of the population, Tamara? Is this important for people out there? You know about the heartland. You know about the world. I, I don't. I don't leave Burbank, so I don't really know. I don't know. I guess that's a good question. Like, oh, as we're all kind of saying, we're not. There's not a candidate that we're super fired up about. Maybe it's like, is there an issue that? What is the central issue that each of us would? really think is is the most important whoever, whoever has a stand on right. this issue that's the person that we're going and, to and i think the person i mean the issue ought not to be beating trump but at the same time ability to do that needs to be somewhere on the checklist mm -hmm. you know um there's cleaning a, up corruption and strengthening democracy that's there, all there's that that's all there is there are a few comments in the chat that i wanted to get to uh our scott brown uh, he coined this phrase i think last week in the chat and i missed it uh he's referring to the field of democratic candidates as the crat pack apostrophe c-r-a-t so i want to give him credit for that because i i like that uh roberto bravo says woke fest 2020 will get trump reelected. Uh, I think that that is a way to encapsulate what I was trying to ask, which is that that idea that the New York Times asks, should a white male represent the Democratic Party? And if anyone's answer is no, absolutely not, under no circumstances should a white male, then you might be trying too hard, you know. Uh, but uh, I, I wouldn't put it quite the way you did, uh, Roberto Bravo, but uh, bravo on being here watching the show. Uh, and one more thing to, for our Scott Brown. Uh, this is directed at Tamara. Biden occupies the big bag of Knuckles Lane. He's the Democrats' bully relative to the Democrat field. He's no progressive. And I guess the thinking I'm, the thinking there is a bully is possibly going to be uh, what you would want in a general election against President Trump. But I don't know. I don't know if he can successfully be bullied. I mean, he can on Twitter, but I feel like you know, on the on the debate stage, you know, he'll just come up with a new nickname. I, I wonder for you. why 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 bully? Is it because he came out of the gates with strong numbers, which, by the way, came from larger donations? So while the Biden campaign is trying to use words like grassroots, I'm like, is any? I'm thinking to myself, is anybody really believing that when your first fundraiser was held at Mr. Comcast lobbyist house? I or buy him at least. That sounds like a small business owner. Am I wrong? <laughs> Comcast, I, they don't own anything, do they? Never heard of them. They don't, right? own, they don't own a building down the street from here. By bully, does, does, do we just mean like the candidate that has the, like just the brash, no nonsense, like I'll say what I want. I mean, that's probably true. We do need a candidate that people, <laughs> that's that's how we have Donald Trump. People gravitate towards the, uh, no nonsense. I, you you can't tell. I'll say what I want. I can't be I I can't be pigeonholed or held back. I'm not going to say what they want me to say. Uh, and uh, referring back to our earlier conversation, our friend Jeff Graham in the booth says uh, with Cory Booker saying that he would have a female running mate. Uh, it's uh, very up there with, uh, quote, my best friend is black. So it's saying, like, my best friend is a woman. Yes. So, mm -hmm. uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, but, uh, and uh, Jay Camacho in the trap, burn your bust. So they're, they're mm -hmm. still there. They're just mm -hmm. like, yeah, we're all in. Uh, four years hasn't changed the way they felt. Uh, uh, you know, the, I, the hard part for me about Bernie right now is that Elizabeth is in. And for me, uh, they're, they're very similar. They stand for pretty much the same principles. I would be thrilled with either one of them. So I don't know, what do I do? Spend money on both or wait until it's one or the other? I think they need to Rochambeau who's going to be who's running mate. There you go. I, I don't know if that would help them. I think, and, and when people try and tell me that they are the far left, I, you know, I roll to the max because they're not far left. They are just left i just feel that like someone like biden is just like a hair to the left of republicans do you feel like there are people that you would say like oh that person represents the far left like some people would say alexandra ocasio cortez is far left is she at least farther left than they are yeah, yeah i think because she has used terms like you know capitalism is irredeemable and she may have very good arguments for that but um i think that there are um, candidates, including Bernie and Warren, that would say that capitalism can work if we, if we, I don't know what the, took the corruption out of it. Right. But 
I, you know, communism might have worked if there weren't corruption at the top, and you know <laughs> they, they kept okay. all the money at the top. So, but right, but right now we're a capitalist society. So sure. Some people are not comfortable with the idea of upending that whole thing. And I, too, I would like to know, is it possible to do capitalism with a consciousness? I wish we had specific sponsors for this show because that would be the perfect time. It's like, speaking of capitalism, this segment is brought to you by Carl's Jr. <laughs> or <laughs> whomever. Warren whomever. Oh my God. On the way here, I saw a billboard. The I think billboard for, for Del Taco? Yeah. With the Beyond I thought, Me tacos. I thought, of you. I thought of you when I saw that. Oh my gosh. That a week, a week or so ago, they made that, that announcement. That is exciting. Mm -hmm. So would you try a Del Taco Beyond Meat taco course, just yep. to see how it is? Yep. I, I have... I, have, I can't remember the last time I went to fast food, but I have gone to Carl's Jr. Because they have the, the yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I feel like that's, uh, <laughs> sorry, storage and resident, uh, always in the chat. It just makes me laugh. If you're undecided, donate to Trump. I think that's actually very funny. Uh, <laughs> Wait, if, uh, I would why? be very curious to know if I don't he see his logic. had to vote for anyone in the Democratic field right oh, now. Yeah. Trump was not an option. Who could he stomach? Right. If if this was the end of Trump's second term and he just wasn't able to run again and your uh, Republican options were the Republican options that you have right or now. Joe like, Biden. Like Bill Weld, you know. Uh, so, yeah. Is, is there anyone of the 20 Democrats, this is directed to storage yard resident, but also Trump supporters. If, you know, you saw all of them and it's like, well, I got to vote for one of these. Just let's say that. They were both they were running against each other mm -hmm. you know that this is the only election mm -hmm. is going to be this democratic primary and i think some countries that's kind of how it works uh so whom would you be most comfortable voting for if you're watching live tell us in the chat if you're watching the archive version leave a comment and uh we will try to get to it uh next week we I always would, try i would have a feeling that it would either be somebody like Biden, who, if you think about it, Biden's biggest money supporters are going to be the same ones that give Trump money, or somebody oh, yeah. on the other end of the spectrum, uh, more like a, 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 a Bernie, or people who have an issue with Bernie's age, and maybe he's a, you know, too left, Pete Buttigieg, who, to me, is sort of a, um, I, I think he tries to call himself a regressive, and he's kind of there i think he's like a b minus progressive so uh whereas if joe biden tries to call himself a progressive dear lord that would be like c I minus i don't he, feel like he was. would i don't know i, don't I mean he kind of did in his first um in in his speech that when he was apologizing for the touching and stuff like that <clears> he <throat> talked about how for his entire career he has been the far left guy and he says that uh the way Oof. that the party the way that the party is moving at this point, um, oh, no, I, I'm, the, I'm, the, I don't want to misquote what he's saying. The country went really right, and he went right along with it. Who did uh, Joe By, Biden? Yes, it, even if he was on the left, like I don't know if you can see my hands here. Like this is the left, and this is the right, but the whole thing went like this. So he went right too, and I, I would like to see somebody course correct who is actually a moderate, but a moderate if you don't look at the last 30 years. Did when he vote for the veered. Iraq war? I think I didn't, didn't like everybody feel like, you know, and, and I think a lot of people did it because politically you didn't want to be the, oh, you're not voting for that because look how important that is. So you hate your country, you know, and I think, I mean, what, Hillary, real quick? It, what, did, did Biden did vote, Biden for, the vote for the Iraq war? war? I'm going to guess yes. I'm going to guess yes, guess but. no. I think he didn't. You're gonna guess no. Now, and would what that is, make a difference? What is your would no guess? Would that make him progressive in your eyes? What, 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 and also, what is that no guess uh, based on? I, because I, suppose. I, I think I remember him pointing that out at. at, at well, one that's of true. The if he didn't, he would definitely point it out. Uh, so let's see. Did, <laughs> did Joe Biden vote for Barack Obama? No, that's not what I'm looking at. <laughs> the answer is no. He wrote. He wrote in his name. Is that the question that it, came it, up? It came up as an autocomplete option. Oh my gosh. Which I think is great. Uh, I love what does that. that say about America? Uh, Joe Biden voted for the Iraq War and the Patriot Act. Oh, yeah. okay. Wow. And, uh, and, uh, you My know, mistake. My mistake. Yeah. And then, of course, this is the beauty of looking things up at the Internet. 
Is Joe Biden a Republican? So oh, that's that. That is a fair. Question. Well, that's saying that he's not that far left. If anybody's exactly. googling that, like, oh wait, I kind of like what he has to say. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway, we're uh, essentially at a time. Uh, there are so many other things I wanted to talk about this week. Um, you know, there's this whole. Uh, you know, Trump doesn't want any of his financials to come out of Deutsche Bank and, and all mm-hmm, that. Mm-hmm. Is there a way in two minutes to to say, do you have like, is it, it seems like it's never concrete with that. Like if they want to do it, they can. Yes. But if they choose not to because of whatever the president has said or done, they can, can they just not turn this over? By they, you mean the bank. I mean, do you mean, I'm specifically talking about the Deutsche Bank. I mean, they can withhold until the end of whatever the legal dispute is. But just remember, I think that people should... Ooh, we've got cheering that, for that? That's a legal dispute, yeah. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> no problem. I think people need to go back to the emoluments clause because I know some people are like, oh, enough with the investigations already. But... The emoluments clause where you're looking to see if the president is financially or otherwise wrongly benefiting from his position, that is something that is Congress's responsibility. So when people are like, oh, enough with this, leave him alone, you're trying they're trying to get into his personal finances, uh yeah, that's because we need to make sure that no, you know, foreign or domestic uh entities are having any undue influence on him by essentially benefiting him financially. And, and and again, everybody keeps pointing this out, like if there was nothing to be worried about, then why is he trying to block, why is he trying to block his taxes from being released? Why, are, was he, why is there a lawsuit uh, so that Deutsche doesn't yeah. let any I of I mean, his... I, I know a lot of people think that there's all sorts of things hidden in there. I think it's because he's not as rich as everybody it, absolutely. thinks he is. I, I think absolutely. It, I think he's so, embarrassed by that. I don't think he's done it. There's, I don't think there's anything criminal in, you know, filed tax returns or any legal documents. Oh, I wouldn't be surprised. I, I, I'm not saying it didn't happen. I'm just saying that you don't file paperwork with a, a government agency that reflects that. You know, you kind of fudge it a little bit. I, I think that that's what it is. It's mostly embarrassing. Is that what uh, what you're where you're I mean, meaning? I mean, I wouldn't be surprised, but you think that's enough that just that with no illegal activity is enough to keep him from trying to get everything released? Yes. Every, everything's a, a popularity contest. I mean, he ran for president because they made fun of him at the White House Correspondents' Dinner. You know, he he ran for president because uh, Seth Meyers thought he was better than him. That's really what it comes down to. Anyway, we are out of time, but uh, thanks to everybody who joined us in the chat. Uh, thanks to Scott Moore being on assignment, but uh, in theory, he'll be back next week. Uh, and until next week, Chelsea, where do people find you? At Chelsea Galicia. And Tamara, where do people find you? Hey, Tamara underscore. And you can find me on Twitter and Instagram I'm at Christian DMZ, and you can find this show at Trump Report ABTV on Twitter. Thanks again, everyone. We will see you next Tuesday at 4 Eastern, 7 Pacific. Until then, Hi. have a good one. Our founder, Kevin Undergaro, and me, Maria Menunos, would like to thank you for tuning in to AfterBuzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. (laughs) The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.